Welcome to this webinar on how to use Editorial Manager. This session is intended to show you how the system works. We will show you the editorial practice from start to finish. Please note that your role in Editorial Manager depends on the journal's workflow. The workflow steps that apply for your own role have been outlined in the Editorial Manager workflow document that you have received. If you have not received such a document, please contact us. You will have also received another document entitled Editorial Manager The Big Picture in which you will find more general information regarding the layout of your main menu, which links to keep track of, and the options you have to take action on a manuscript, which is intended as, an seminar, as a summary of this seminar for reference. There are also tutorial files located on the opening page of Editorial Manager on the right-hand side. You will receive notification emails from Editorial Manager in which you are told there's something to do. Generally, you will be able to see at a glance in your main menu whether any manuscripts require action. So you may wish to log on regularly and check what needs to be done. The workflow is linear one step has to be finished in order to go on to the next one. You must notify the author enable that they have to revise their manuscript in order for them to upload a revised manuscript. In general, the workflows are as follows. Check, assign, review. Decide, notify, set final disposition. You can have as many revision rounds as needed and you may also decide to skip the review process, for example, when a paper is out of scope. The system allows you to personalize letters that you send when inviting reviewers, submitting decisions, etc. This can be done under the Customize link, and buttons, so as these, will allow you to view and edit the letters before they are sent. The first thing we would have done is to log on to the system which we have, as you can see, have done here. Now what we're going to do now is find an editor role, since that is what you need to see. By clicking on this editor-in-chief, so-called, on the test site, I am then that person and have their rights. So this is what the editor main menu looks like. What we there are a number of folders, and the most important ones to look at are these. New Assignment Requiring Assignment, Revised Submission Requiring Assignment, New Assignments, Submissions with Reviews Complete, Submission Requiring Additional Reviewers, Submission with One or More Late Reviews, All Submissions with the Editor's Decision. If there are manuscripts in any of these folders that require action of, from you, the number at the end of the link will be shown as one or higher, and the text be has become a hyperlink, which is what we see here. Clicking on the hyperlink allows you to access the folder and the manuscript. So, for example, if we click on New Submission Requiring Assignment, we get to see all the manuscripts in a folder in a table overview. Each manuscript is shown in its own row, and for each manuscript, the table includes some general information. The name of the author, the title of the article, the article type, the number, but the number is not there yet because it hasn't been assigned to anyone yet. The display can be changed by either clicking on the expand or on the, on the collapse. And via this, you can also change the order in which things are shown, although my experience is that it's fine as it is. The first thing that happens is that you have to check the manuscript and assign it to someone, whether it's yourself or another editor in the editorial chain. So 
So the first thing you would do is look at it. This can be done in either View Submission, which gives you the PDF, which you would then open and read, or by going to File Inventory, where you can access the source files. Yeah, stop. The receiving editor is the one that screens the manuscript for completeness, anonymity if it's applicable, and any other criteria that the journal may use. This can be the editor-in-chief, this can be an assistant. It depends on how the journal is set up. The first thing you would do is look at the manuscript. Does it follow the instructions for authors? Is it anonymized? Is the English good enough? Is there any reason you would need to send it back to the author to have them fix it? So the first thing you look, we can do that either using View Submission, which gives us access to the PDF. You would then click on Open, see the PDF, etc. The PDF that the system builds of the author's files also has line numbering in it. So if need be, you can send it back to them, explaining what has to be done where. The other is File Inventory, which gives you access to the original files of the author. You would also want to check to see if this is a duplicate, because there's a D there, there is a chance, this is the test site, so in, indeed there are similar, similarly entitled articles submitted, but you might also want to click on this to see if the author had tried to submit the article more than once. The other screen we see here is the detail screen that gives you basic information on the journal, on the article in question. If need be, you can use the discussion forum to talk to the editor-in-chief or anyone else in simply by picking a title, writing it in under the topic, and a short question. You then have access to other people. It could be other board members. It could be a co-editor. You can give them access to files. You can give them access to reviews and comments. And in principle, you don't need to send letters. This will create an email, which will go to other pe the other people. We set a flag so that we know that there is a discussion underway, underway, submit, and then it shows up here in the list. We would also see things like the due dates if for reviews, the due date for a revised manuscript. You can write notes to yourself or to other people, which other only you, editors, and the journal manager can see and not the author. The history is useful because that gives us a complete overview of any emails in the system. So as I said, the notification email that you get from the system telling you to look at something will be in there, so you don't have to keep those. Throughout the entire process, the history and detail screen are always available and give you a good starting point to find out what the status of the manuscript is and what you need to do. What you may need to do at the very beginning, if the article wasn't good enough, is send it back. Please edit submission, customize. Here you see it with the metadata in. There's some problems you need to fix, blah, blah, blah. If you should notice that there's problems over and over again, you can send an email to ematbrill.com and we can put permanent comments in for you, such as um, a refer reference, for example, to the instructions for author or what else usually goes wrong. And it's always with the letters sent now. 
This is not an official decision and will allow the author to, up, to upload a, a, a better version of the same manuscript. Should you wish to actually compare one to the other, then it would be better to, to make this a revision decision to start off with. Otherwise, the next um, step in this would be to assign the manuscript to myself. And that allows you to handle the manuscript yourself. Otherwise, you can also, if there are other editors in the chain, you as the um, editor-in-chief can also assign something to someone else. If you want to keep the manuscripts together, you can also create a link submission. You can create a new group, which could be anything from a letter and reply to a special issue. Submit. Add to group. And it asks, do you want to? The answer is yes. And there it is. This is a good way to keep articles together. It could also be done um, for articles that are go to, to go together in a, in a particular issue. Now the handling ed editor has a choice at the beginning, of course, and that's to, to deal with the manuscript themselves or to assign it to somebody else. Once it's assigned to them, it'll be under their new assignments, and at that point you can start to think about the review process. Now, if you had questions about who to send the manuscript to, of course, you can use the discussion forum either via discussions or via the discussions link in details, which we had just seen. Discussions. Or to the discussions forum here, which is exactly the same. And it could be, all right, who can I invite? Otherwise, you would then go to invite reviewers. The number of reviewers depends upon A, the type of article, and B, the journal. Many journals have two as the required number of reviewers, but this can be brought up or down depending on what you need. If one reviewer says accept and another reject, you would want to change it to three. If one is so review is so complete and so overwhelmingly for or against, you might want to change it to two, two, from two to one. We go to search my publication, all reviewers, go. And from here, you can either type in an exact name, you can type in a space as a wildcard to get the entire list. To have two reviewers invited, you would want to think of at least putting in three names two to be invited straight away, and one to be invited as alternate. I and V is invited straight away, ALT is alternate. That means that if one of the first two people who were invited straight away said no, the alternate would be advanced automatically and you wouldn't have to do anything. You see here how well they did or did not do in the past. That can be useful if they're a good reviewer, but it takes a year and a day and you have to have it on time it might be better not to pick that person. So we're just going to pick. It would also tell you if one of the people you're looking at is one of the co-authors of that manuscript. So I've got three now. Proceed. Normally they get a month to review after they say yes. And as we've seen before, we can customize all the letters in the system except for automatic notification emails. Confirm selection and proceed. And they're reviewed. And you see here who. If reviewers are late, it's relatively easy to send reminder letters. If they've been invited and they haven't responded, it's this one. 
show all authors. Here it says seven. It's usually we give them five days after the response. Submit. And of course we see a number. We check off send reminder. Send reminders. Choose the letter, which in this case is an invitation reminder. We can customize it. In this case we won't. The system fills in all the information, the name of the reviewer, their title, the title of the article in question, the number, etc. And also your name. Send letters now. And that part's done. We go back to reminders. These are the reviewers who said yes and they're late. And in that case we want one day after. And then it's up to you whether you take the first reminder, second reminder, or customize the letter. It takes very little time and it's a good way of keeping the turnaround time short. It's also possible if they take much too long that you need to uninvite a reviewer. Here there are reviewers and they haven't responded. Well you're going to try the first one, D author, we're going to try to send one more reminder, but this one, Z author, is just taking too long. Uninvite, custom letter most of the time. We send you a request, we receive no response, we apologize, submit, and that person's been uninvited. Now if you should want to take a decision and reviewers have been unresponsive, so you've decided to do it on your own, then for example, because here one of the review one of the alternates has been advanced, so we would uninvite them. Uninvite them. Change the number of required reviews to zero because you can copy-paste your own review into the decision letter. Okay. So now we've got zero. And return to all assigned submissions. Let's just go back actually because if we go to the main menu, we see now but that manuscript has now moved from new assignment and it could have been here requiring ex additional reviewers or one or more late reviews but now it's in the folder with required reviews complete. Because it's there then you have the decision link before that and without enough reviews you would not have had it and you would not be able to take a decision except at the very beginning when you can reject something. Submit, say it's moderate revision. If you, if you were an associate editor and you wanted the editor-in-chief to know, you might put it here, otherwise it's going to be here. Proceed, proceed, and here you have your letter. Now if there were real comments by reviewers, there would be quite there could be quite a long list below this. It would have been possible for you or the reviewers to upload um, things like the instructions for, jour for journals for the um, author to get the style right, or perhaps a marked manuscript. And we're going to send that now. And now we've taken a decision. In principle, it's the format of the journal that determines who takes the decision. It could be the editor-in-chief. It could be an assistant. If you're an associate or a guest editor, revise decisions are usually yours to send to the author, but the final 
decision of accept or reject is done by the editor-in-chief or by an assistant. Let's just go back. Here's an editor's decision. And in this case, the author hasn't been notified yet. So we're just going to notify the author. And again, it's very much as we had it before. Send now. At the very end, if it's accept or reject, at that point after the notify has been done, and that means also that any copy edit has been done before as well, then the final disposition is set. This can only be done, accept or reject, can only be done if the author has been notified. In this case, we're going to make it an accept, proceed. And in this form, you can also put in information on which issue you want the article to go into and in which position, if that is already known, if there's anything with color figures or anything else, the journal manager should now Proceed. Reflect to the bottom. Proceed. Confirm. And this now goes to the journal manager who then knows that the article has been accepted and that they should go into the system and download the files and have them typeset. The last thing we're going to look, one of the last things that we're going to look at now is how to copy edit. Edit submission must be done before accept and notify. It can be done earlier on if there's something minorly wrong and you would rather fix it rather than sending it back to the author to have it done. The edit submission can be done by an editor a cop, or a copy editor. If you were sending it to a copy editor outside of Manager, you would download it just under File Inventory, send it to the copy editor, and then use Edit to put the version back in. When a person uploads, first they do an article type, then the title, then the authors, and the order can be changed using update author order. There must be an abstract and keywords for everything except for things like an editorial or a book review. The abstract is what's online for free and is the selling point of the article. Additional information has to do with things like, did it follow the journal style? Is it checked by a native speaker? Is it anonymized? If an author forgets this, however, they won't be able to complete their submission. They can add comments if they wish. And next we have attach files. Normally, to edit the manuscript, you would Download, save, copy edit, and then you would go back here, pick as this is a button with an arrow facing down, that's a drop down menu, pick the type of file you need, browse, then you're in your desktop, open, attach. With a Mac it's ever so slightly different, but it boils down to the same thing. You do want to ensure that the name of the edit file that you're going to edit is not exactly the same as the manuscript file already there, because otherwise the system won't let you upload it. You would also want to put something like edited after. If you needed to remove the other file, you would under select click the file that you're removing, 
remove it. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And then it's gone. The next one we see what has been uploaded. The system puts them automatically in the right order. And here we see what is exactly required at this point. For some journals, a biographical note may be required. For a revision, in many cases, a response to reviewers is required. And then needing approval. At this point, it said don't use the back button. Most of the time you can. In this case, it prefers you don't. There's my submission. I view it by opening it, and then I approve it. If I was the author uploading, there'd be an extra little tick box here saying I agree with Brill's conditions, which have to do with to avoid plagiarism and the like. But because I'm the editor, I don't need to use the tick box. The last thing we're going to look at are the search functions. There's a search submissions because an author may email you, I wrote an article on such and such, my name is this, and what is the status of my article? So you don't have the number and you may not be sure of the spelling of the author's first or surname. So we can check on any one of a number of things. And if I want to know everything that's in there, Use the space as the wild card, and then we get the whole thing, and then I see, oh yes, this is the one that I'm looking for. There's also search people. You can add people to the reviewer database in Invite re Reviewers, but you can also register them here. You need a, sur a surname initials, and an email address. Although in principle, you would want to look first to see if somebody's already in the system or not. Because this is the email we're using on the test site, of course, it's warning me there's more than one person, but you can override it. Make sure you give them the reviewer role. You don't have to use them, but you, then it's there and they'll come up on the list. Also make sure, as we can see, these are the things that are required, that their title is there. If you don't know it, putting doctor or professor can be safe and a country. It is possible to put in more information, but you don't have to. In general, if you register somebody, it's because you're going to ask them to do something afterwards so you don't have to send them the letter telling them that you registered them. When you send the invitation, for example, the reviewer invitation, they'll get that information then as well as their username and password. Older existing journals may have as much as seven or 800 people and that's it in that um, system. The other thing that is useful to know is that it's possible to act for other people in the system. Because authors and or reviewers may go back to one of the editors and say, look, I tried to upload my, whether it's a review or a submission, and it didn't work. Here are the files. In other words, you do it. In that case, you can either go to the journal manager or to the help desk, or you can do it yourself. In this case, if I wanted to do something for Mr. Ike, I would click on his role as an author. And then I could submit a new manuscript for him or her. If I log out once, then I'm back in my own role. The same thing goes for their role as a reviewer. If he had a review invitation, that would be a hyperlink. It would be underlined and we could do the same thing. Please be aware that there are manuals for authors 
reviewers and editors found on the main page of Editorial Manager for your journal on the right-hand side. Thank you.